Una and really make Bepoon join fights before their double core wants to. Because Morphling Sniper can be slow. Like, it can be fine. Uh, you can fight with these heroes. You can definitely join the fights with one or two items on both and have high impact and win those fights. It's not that Bet Boom are pressured, but you want to put them in a position where they feel they have to go back to defend the base, have to contest Roshan because the pace is too fast, and that's when you can exploit this lineup. Starting off with the smoke on both sides, the liquid is going to go the far five man smoke into the triangle and see if they uh, find any freebies. That boom, pretty defensive here on the positioning. Will will not get picked off. It would seem unless. Oh, they're gonna oh, sneak through behind the tower. Make sure everybody goes through the line appropriately, and they manage to find the sniper. Can they kill him underneath tower? And it looks like they've got it pretty easily. So first blood just Damn. inside of tower range for 33. I mean, that kind of makes you wonder why more teams don't do that. Mm -hmm. That just guaranteed work. They have the stunts to make sure it happens. That's a nice little pickup there. I mean, GPKs, it's about as safe as you can be. Can't really flame them for that one. Yeah, I mean, that, there, there is uh, other lineups would not be able to make that work nearly as well, whether it's one, sh accidentally showing yourself underneath the tower, or two, uh, see, you're just met with a five-man, you know, that you... <laughs> You're just between a tier yeah, one and tier two tower, and you're taking a five on five. That sounds uh, that sounds like you're guaranteed throwing away two or three heroes. I mean, they knew they were way stronger level one. There, there's no chance of that fight. Yeah, I'm gonna a bit more harass here. So we're looking at the early wave advantage for Liquid for sure. Like they they want these first two minutes to go really well in the side lanes. That's one of the ways you can punish Morphling, especially this Morph Enchantress lane. They don't really have spells level one, so. Let me get some work in if you can. Get the slaughter up to some fast nulls, bracers, whatever, 33 ones here. Same thing for Mickey. You want him to get some good early waves so you can get to that level three first in this lane and abuse that level two aura as fast as possible. If you get level three in Luna lane versus level two, you're gonna win it first anything. So these first two minutes, pretty pivotal for liquid side lanes if they can execute them well. And mid is just, you know, I mean, get what you can, Nisha, but over the long run, it's not gonna be a fun one for him in the the isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's already starting off pretty poorly as GPK five denies in for this uh, initial wave or two. That is, a, that is a good start for a low base damage hero. Getting the quack. Oh, Nisha set that one up for him. GPK happy to see that. Gets the E ward as well. Man, he is, mm. he's smoking it early here. Yeah, he is. Getting a lot now. Gets the range creep deny as well. Very nice. Saving and Insane are playing on the uh, side of the lane right now. And uh, just something to beware uh, with uh, a long range hero like Luna. The Batrider's got to be careful because that is not a simple 1v1. The Luna can always join in with the Lucent Beam and then close that gap for a couple right clicks. And as you said, once you get to level three, those right clicks start hitting real hard. A minute about. Cosmetics Austin. I was waiting. <laughs> Did you see this Toronto Tokyo guy? Like you see what he has on this hero? Uh yeah, he's like he a, has the a dire type base. red. Yeah. Yeah, he has a modified Chinese burning cosmetic. He has mm -hmm. every immortal plus crimson. This has got to be one of the most decked out heroes I've ever seen in my life. This is like two thousand dollars in cosmetics. <laughs> On an enchantress that <laughs> I feel like we rarely play. Why? <laughs> I, I when the loading screen was on and I was looking, I was talking about their draft. I almost said Lena. <laughs> I almost yeah, said like, Lena because that hero is just so on fire. Glance value, my ass. This is an enchantress from hell. Like, what is going on here, dude? This is just out of control. But I guess another discussion for another time. And we'll see what he can make do with all of this, all of these fancy clothes. Do they actually mean anything? Are they pay to win? We're about to find out in this series. As Liquid don't have anybody close to matching that. I mean, Nisha's running a Lashrak set from 2021 or something like this is, this is a brutal cosmetic matchup for sure. And if we learned anything from Crownfall, it's that hats matter. They matter a lot. They matter to the player base, that's for sure.
side lanes seem to be going pretty even. Uh, the biggest discrepancy is definitely between the uh, mid heroes right now. There's nothing you can oh. do. We're getting to uh, level three on the side lanes right now, which is where you typically start seeing some kill opportunities present itself. 33 presses Toronto Tokyo. They go on bottom lane with save. Disruption, and if they can hit him with another poison, it'd be tons of damage. They can't quite get it, though. And save will only take a little bit of damage. It's a massive upgrade. If you hit that fifth stack, it really increases exponentially, but it doesn't happen here. I mean, Pepu are getting out of these side lanes in a pretty damn good spot. Liquid played them pretty well, but over the, if, they, if you're not getting any cheeky kills, I mean, they're resorting to pulling waves top. They didn't get the kill bottom with that level three timing. So it's not, you know, it's not 100 out of 100, but it's, it's fairly solid for Liquid, and I think Nisha's doing perfectly fine mid here. I'm going to try and lose him right now. But uh, don't have the mana for this stack. And if you're throwing uh, Shadow Poisons at the Kunkka, you're probably wasting your time, frankly. You're probably just giving the uh, the Bat Rider and the Kunkka some stick charges to work with. So now Insania is out of mana. Mickey is pretty low on mana. I'm probably not going to see a kill in this bottom lane uh, for a while now, unless it's going to be uh, Liquid Dying. They're going to rotate Nisha here. Because he does not want to stay mid that much in this game in the one-on-one. -on -one. Like, he wants the XP, but he's not really farming well in this lane. So if he wants to make early rotations, it makes sense to me from that standpoint. But these aren't easy lanes to rotate to either. I think yeah. bottom's the easiest in terms of the setup, but that's not really the lane you want to go to in this game. You're not going to get a huge amount out of it. This is the catapult window, though, if he wants to make a move, but it looks like he's just going to settle in mid. So it's just going to be a slow early game here for Liquid. And I don't think that favors them. I think Beth Boom are happy if this is the case. They're just going to farm up all their cores here. They're going to have a lane that is just unenterable for Nisha at this point. And they're going to secure six minute rune. Shield rune bottom. And Toronto Tokyo going to... Was that going to land? Not quite. <laughs> he tried to hurricane him to get it closer to the shot. It doesn't quite work. Uh, it does look like, though, the ward is going to be spotted out on the high ground. So Toronto Tokyo is going to deal with that preemptively. His auto attacks literally look like impetus. How's this fair? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little wild. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. I wish I had these cosmetics when I played it, I'll tell you that much. Think they would have changed any outcomes? No, but it would make me feel better about the outcome. Level five versus level four bottom. That this boom eruption to get Mickey out of this Firefly. And so that's going to be more HP burned and more mana used in a defensive situation. Save and Miro got to be very happy with the way this lane is going now. I mean, Bet Boom happy in general. Like they got their course to the, the point of the game where they're self-sufficient, which means the supports can make the roam to mid. Toronto Tokyo has been sitting here, but it's just an empty lane. Nisha is just, he's jungling. He does not want to enter it. Yeah, you get some harassment on Nightfall, but it's not, it's not preventing him from staying up here. So you have an empty it's, lane uh, mid, pressure coming in bottom, boat up soon, more harassment on the mid cave. In fact, we'll get a TP out of Boxy. Disruption so into far. Bushwhack. This is where you finally get your kill. This is where you finally get a second kill outside of that initial first blood. Mickey takes some damage to the Firefly, but save can't stick around for long. Now, it does mean the pressure is going to continue to support showing themselves. Uh, the Enchantress of Toronto, Tokyo will continue to try and pressure the mid lane, though. 33 was actually trying to, to help Nisha out with this lane a little bit. They just didn't find Toronto, Tokyo hidden away in the trees. I know he's here somewhere. Oh, they got the lightning on him, but the shrapnel will scare him back. And another power rune that is free for Betpoo. Trying to defend these stacks for Nisha, because if he can't lane, he's got a jungle. He can't afford to get these up. That was a heads up rotation by 33. Could have been a lot of damage done there by Toronto Tokyo, but instead, just gets thwarted. They secure the stacks for Nisha, and now he has a game. He has a, a decent game off of a rough lane. And they protected their tower from the roam as well. Not a bad outcome mid for Liquid, honestly. 
I feel like yeah. you are probably happy with this in this like Lesh Sniper matchup with zero commitment from supports into the Lesh Rack. He's done a decent job keeping the economy up. Yeah, I mean, when it, uh, are scanning. the pace of the game, definitely okay for Liquid. Uh, and now that they haven't lost any towers quite yet. I, I love to see it, by the way. These cores uh, making rotations pre-level 6, it seems to be happening a lot more. Uh, everyone seems to, to be having a much better understanding of pressure points. Right when you show a support, when supports make rotations, that it seems like uh, cores will cover uh, for that opening because they know the enemy team's going to push it. Right? They knew that Bed Boom was going to go for it in the mid lane. Bottom lane, we're going to get uh, Insania picked off as this lane is uh, no longer a living situation. Mickey is just, you know, screwed off to the jungle. And uh, if Insania wants to get some experience out of this lane, he could try, but he, he might get picked off a few times for it. Nice heads up play to hold the torrent there. Uses disruption against him. Both teams just stacking up the jungle. Looking for the power in 33, contesting again in the river. I think uh, really uh, the next power rune is a really big one, by the way. Because uh, it was a uh, shield yeah, was rune and invisibility. So you were guaranteed to get regen, haste, or... Um, or Kane, which are all massive on Leshrac if they could have secured it. So you can see why Liquid put so much effort into trying to get it. Unfortunately, it just goes to uh, 33, so a haste rune isn't really that much use to him. Here's that roam at the bottom. Eventually comes through. Does a little boat here if he gets it off. Throw all the spells at okay. little old Miro. That is a dead Kunkka. That boom's gonna look for the return top. Radiance middle tower is under attack. 33 is getting some damage here. God damn. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Nightfall has to, you know, attack. morph into strength. It just means he has less and less armor. So 33's damage becomes more and more effective, even if he can't get the kill. Uh, did some damage onto mid uh, from the side of GPK. Again, a bunch of heroes showed somewhere on the map. They immediately pressure the other lanes when possible. Uh, almost took that tower, in fact. This is what you want versus this Lashrak strategy. Like, if you can pressure their towers, put the Lashrak in a position that he wants to be in, then you're going to feel great about the, the state of the game. And GPK is just going to be king. King of these fights, at least for the foreseeable future. I don't I don't think Liquid have a good answer to the sniper for a long time until their cores are just strong enough to barrel through the fight. Even then, you're going to have to contend with all of the Kunkka spells, Enchantress, Heal, and Slow, any utility Bet Boom have. GPK is going to be strong this game if, if Bet Boom continue to fight around him. And I fully yeah. expect him to just go the, the early fighting items. It's going to be Dragonlance Maelstrom here. A lot of early damage going to be coming out. I wonder if this is uh, part of the game plan for Liquid. Like, they know that mid tower is going to die eventually. Arcane Rune available. Boxy denies that one away from GPK. Uh, but the mid, mid is going to be taken. It's just the matchup, right? Sniper is beats out last track, and he's going to take that tower. So they're trying to put more on keeping the side lanes healthy. They're putting more on, you know, rotating the uh, the last track to bottom lane to make sure that if they lose mid tower, at least their safe lane tower is still up a little bit longer for Mickey. You gotta hold some part of this map, and Nisha's just uh oh, getting Nisha run gets caught out by the ward, and he is definitely dead with the expo coming in. And Senior's trying to make his way for the disruption, but he's gonna be too late. The shot comes in beforehand. Bushwhack though, really nicely set up on both supports. Can they get both supports though? Toronto Tokyo has already started his heal. 33 is barreling in with no HP. Gets a crush off, but that's all he gets off. And now they'll turn their attention over to Insania, the next one who's going to be assassinated down. A waveform through from behind. Bet boom, take over the uh, liquid safe lane. They'll prepare to take another tower. Just not a fight liquid are going to win if the Lush goes down first. Just no way. The Slardar is absolutely worthless in this type of early exchange. We're seeing him try and gap close the sniper. It literally just cost him his life. I mean, the second GPK shows up anywhere in this game, you, you gotta get the hell out, man. You just don't have the heroes to contest with him. And, uh, this early game, it was 
I don't know if it was good enough for Liquid to be happy about where their draft's going to be in the next 10 minutes here. This this looks tough. Isha's going to have an uphill battle ahead of him. 33 was the sacrifice in the laning phase. This is a hero that can play from that position, but it's putting a lot on Mickey in this game. He's going to have to show up. And he, he can carry some of this game with Slaughter Amp accelerating the Roche, giving him the extra physical versus these heroes. But he has to play these fights really well. You can't afford too many deaths on the Luna here, given how much they're committing to him in terms of the, the ancient stacks and what the lifting he's going to have to do here. Because he's going to have to go up against a farm Morphling, a farm Sniper, and a Kunkka that is right now farming ancient. So Miro is also yeah. potentially going to be pretty big here. I mean, to, to be frank, I, I just don't think the matchup is good, right? The Luna, Luna, like if Luna has all the farm, if all their hopes are on the Luna, that's not a great hero for killing a sniper, right? Like the, that matchup no, goes more awful. to the favor of the sniper in that he keeps the distance and he puts single pointed damage on the Luna and threatens her before she gets close. Uh, like you kind of needed 33 to be having a, a, a good game so he could get on top of the sniper and be more than just a crush. Uh, so we'll see if 33 can ever get to that point. Uh, he's going to be farming away some jungle creeps, but sitting lowest on the uh, net worth when it comes to the cores right now, it is not a great start for Liquid. On this, even if you, even if you see a scenario where the Slardar can jump this sniper at some point, that's... I mean, the, the Slardar is not a hero that's going to solo kill the sniper. This isn't the Slardar from past metas where you have Mask Madness, BKB, and you just perma chain stun the dude and solo him down. Like, you can do small pickoffs like this, and you feel great. But the slaughter jumping deep to find the sniper doesn't set the damage up for the Lesh or the Hoodwink nearly as well, because he's going to be very far back in the fight. The Luna can't yeah. just instantly gap close with him. The Lestrak can't gap close with him. So that's something that Liquid are going to have to address is, okay, yeah, maybe you got the, the amp on the sniper, but can anybody follow it up with the slaughter if he goes in? And if you can't play for that, then you have to just kind of fight through the front line here, which... Again, goes back to you just need the Luna to be really strong. So Mickey yeah. can just fight through this Kunkka, fight through the Morphling, chunk them down with Eclipse and Amp. That, that is, seems more doable to me in terms of the strategy. Well, well I will say, yeah, I agree that Sardar is probably never going to be a uh, 1v1 threat to kill the Sniper. I do think if you get like the BKB Ags, you, you, right, you blink on the Sniper and then you just stay on top of them. Uh, and he just can't do the damage back to you, right? Especially once you have the Ags. I mean, yeah, there's a world where that can be the case. I think this sniper is going to deal some damage. He's in pretty good position to scale in this game. There's also going to be an Enchantress who can you can purge your sprint, throw out some impetuses into you. He first revealed his uh, Blink Dagger, and they... <laughs> Man, 33 die. Ooh, almost got him on the bushwhack and attempted TP out. Boxy, a lot of damage coming in. Still at the adaptive strike from ninth fall. So they get not just one kill with that blink dagger uh, reveal, but a second one as well. And now they're going for Nisha. Nisha, oh, Bed Boom is playing fast now. X back into the torrent. Nisha's dead as well. Three kills in a row for Bed Boom. It goes from five to four to five to seven in just 30 seconds. And the tip into Miro. That was, that was a really nice rotation by Miro. Just to make that read, he can get in there and get that X. Only level three X. It's a good play call. They get rewarded for it. Still pick up a Wisdom Rune here later on. And Bed Boom coming here to play in game one. I mean, this game's looking... Pretty much how they wanted it to go. They they didn't get all the early roam action they wanted, but they still got that mid tower off the the one on one. Liquid couldn't really sway it, and now they're just stuck in this game where you're gonna have Morphling, Sniper, Kunkka all farming. That, I mean, that is what Bet Boom had to have wanted from this draft, right? They want a game like this where Nightfall is just jungling, GPK is incredibly strong. Your tower is up at the the 20 minute mark. This mid tier one, you can just fight around it forever. Off the back of the sniper. Oh it's gonna my be an God. aggressive it, move from Liquid, but look they at the just break, smoke man. him up on top of a watcher. So Bet Boom are set up for this one. They're gonna give up Enchantress right away, but this is still a fight that they can win. And they're gonna get the X pull back onto the Slardar. That's gonna be their target. GPK assassinate, put some damage and finish off Nisha while they also go for the Slardar. They get a second kill. Oh, blink out of the disruption here, and he's got a sprint. So should be able to get away. Oh, turn around, Nightfall! Oh no! He stumbles into.
to Mickey's Eclipse. What a turnaround from Boxy, seeing the opportunity hit that bushwhack, and now the uh, hunted become the hunters. Liquid now gonna try and chase down Bet Boom with a beautiful oh, bushwhack. bushwhack once again from Boxy, but there goes the lasso, stopping the damage of Mickey. Disruption goes out, he can't pull him anywhere. They're still Take chasing the GPK, but a concussive grenade gets him back, and now he's away from Mickey. Now he's turning the damage back onto Luna, and now the hunted that turn the hunters become the hunted again, and Liquid will get wiped in the fight. Yeah, I told you, man, you get on top of this sniper, it is not just game over. GPK is hella strong this game and shows that their tank a huge amount of jump. They got the Luna on top of the sniper, but it just doesn't matter. Early grenade paying huge dividends here for GPK as he can recreate the gap. And especially with what happened on the rune, Nisha, he got, he got a little baited by this DD rune. He takes it. You can't blame him. You have to pick that rune up there. But then Nightfall gets the waveform on him and basically solo kills him with an assassinate. So there's just no Lashrak in this fight. Yeah. And that's a huge loss for Liquid. They, they get the Morphling kill. I mean, Boxy put in work here. He had two amazing bushwhacks. You cannot ask for more. The Lasso covers GPK here, though. That's a head up, heads up play by save to make that. Definitely saves the Sniper 100% and lets him turn this fight. Just really good. Little skirmish plays by the supports on Bet Boom. As over the course of this tournament, we've seen it in a lot of these games. Save is just this guy's a beast, man. I feel like people overlook him a lot, but to me, he's like the I don't want to say he's the heart of this team, but this team is not a contender without him. And I don't wow. know if you he's that replaceable. He he's not the heart, I would say he's the brains, considering he's the uh sure. the captain and drafter. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if I look on this Bet Boom squad and I, I'm looking at a player who's going to stand out amongst the rest of the positions at a tournament and, like, put them over the top, I, I think it's him. And I think it's been him for a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, 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 the, the fact, this guy is like a full package in that he is uh, one of the best in his position, like absolute best, like constantly top three yep. four positions uh, and has been for a while, while also being a captain and a drafter and all that sort of thing. So. Very valuable. It's going to be Liquid trying to go back to the, the game plan of accelerate the objectives. Use their lineup for what it can do, which is kill Roshan and get the hell out, because this is a smoke gank coming for you that you barely Link dodged. Lasso 33 stuck around, but does not get found. Good move by Liquid. Didn't have much other choice in this game. You just have to start getting Aegis's on this Luna. Yeah. I <laughs> mean... I mean, that that's they didn't have a choice. I think you're right. They had to take that Roshan, but such a scary prospect. The Miro has his Ag and Scepter. If they get caught in the pit oh, against yeah, it's a Storm, a it's, 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 it's the fight is over and the game is practically over from there because you probably get like 5 0 wipes and lose Roshan. Nisha is going to lose his Aegis. In fact, he's it's probably going to lose too. his life. The save is going to blink in and lasso him. There are no saves here. He doesn't even have to. He's just gone. Yeah. I mean, there's no hope for this flush rack once he starts getting hit by a sniper. The fight's just almost over off that. That was Demonic very Purge casual. Countering the enchant to spell for dispel, but they got him on the assassinate X disruption. Dodges some of that one. Safe still looking for that lasso. Looking for Boxy. Diving into tier threes. Can they punish this at all? Save is going to die to the Demonic Purge as uh, Insania got that out right before he died. A little too greedy, looking for the plus one, just as we praise him. Still, I mean, it's Bet Boom just running the map. That was an Aegis that did nothing for Liquid except get Nisha killed twice. Set him back even farther. I just don't know what the recovery path is for this Lashrak. Like, Bet Boom really did a ridiculous job of shutting this hero down. Liquid yeah. just can't help him back in the game. They don't have the heroes to do it. Slaughter Amp doesn't help Lesh come back in this game. The Luna Aura doesn't help him come back in the game. So how does he how does he join these fights and have impact? You know, he needs a lot to be cleared out for him to be able to go in. Maybe it's just BKB. Like if you get BKB Shivas, that's your timing. I can see it with that those items. It's pretty much what he has queued. He has BKB Blink Shivas. If you get all of Yeah, them. I was going to say, I, I think a Blink Dagger would go a long ways. I'm not saying suggesting that as his next item, but 
just to try and be an offensive threat, like jump with the Slardar yeah, on the sniper. Because frankly, this matchup will always be terrible for you, so you just have to be, the, you have to go on the offensive. Nisha dodging the X behind a singular tree, but they will smoke him out pretty quickly here. Bushwhack goes out. They do manage to get the last, oh no, they don't get the last, no. They blow up the Bat Rider and he gets the disruption, saving Nisha's life. What a turn of events there. Wait, wait, Nisha. Oh, demonic heal goes off. He's okay. He stays alive. But that was crazy. Bed Boom hit the initiation. They went on the last track while getting the lasso on the save. They played that correctly. It's just the Bat Rider got blown up by the Eclipse. So the save was free to get the disruption off. And their damage just also wasn't there. Like, you're looking at the dots on the map, Nightfall's super far away. He's not even in this fight. And GPK, he's committing on the Lesh, but the Lesh was healing off of uh, Toronto Tokyo and the Miero here. So his damage is mitigated, and then he just has to get the hell out. So it's an awkward dive for Bet Boom. But damn, did Nisha play that well. That little tree fogging them for just that extra bit really paid off there. Yep. Massive. Head back into the game where uh, Boxy has been uh, ganked in the mid lane. Who's just trying to push in a little bit and gets found pretty easily by the X from the Kunkka. The little Torn interaction. Get save a shard, that is... That's a great shard. Middle tower is under a little extra buyback cost, never hurt. DKB is done. Save's gonna run into 33 here. He does have lasso. 33, gonna be pulled in. Is he gonna die? Get off the BKB? No, he just he just dies. Hundred to zero, man. Whew. Nice pickup. I mean, look at all the dire vision on this side of the map. There's a reason Saves playing here. This is just all Beth Boom's control, trying to shut down the ancient farm from the Luna. And BK gets up idea. Oh, the glyph on 12 HP on the tower, which means other people can TP after this, or maybe they won't. Maybe they don't have TPs. Maybe he's just going to have the BKB TP into mid where the fight's already breaking out. The uh, Batrider gets picked off there. Not sure how that started, but starts well for Liquid, it seems. They've had some initiation troubles this game. First, the Glimmer Hoodwink who's in the trees. This Blink Aetheral and Shadow Demon. These Liquid supports have found a lot of farm in this game, and they're very good at combating the, the Batrider here. That was one of the, the upsides of their draft. And they will. Uh, is kind of a beast. Like he can do a lot. Continue of these to find a lot of farm, right? Because uh, it's Hoodwink and then it's Shadow Demon Luna. So he's going to be pumping out oh, yeah. these disruption illusions always. Shadow Demon's always a strong hero, especially when you get the items up. He has the items this game. Cleanse on top of it. Thirty-three has to be KB, but he may still die. The assassinate is not quite enough, but the damage from Nightfall is. Take a hero, take a tier two. No rest for the wicked, it seems, is bet boom. Shake off the pick off on save and say, that's all right. If you can't get the initiations, we'll find it some other way. You get a glyph out of that. They're gonna stay here. That was the, the shadow blade for GPK, paying off. Oh, they are still close to BKB on the last track. They, they really do not want to go back right now, but they have to. Or maybe yeah, they don't, maybe they give up a lane. This is an early lane to give up for a lineup that wanted to be pushing that boom at this point. Another glyph. Okay, PKB done for the last track. Oh. And they catch these heroes before they get away. A long range bushwhack snags Miro. Has a lot of shadow poison stacks on him too, but Liquid cannot force it until 33 is available. So the best they could do is smoke up and try and chase after bed boom. Now that they've hit their timing of triple BKBs. But it's going to get you got to make this flush yeah. rack BKB work. There's well, no way around it. About as good as it can get. It could be a little bit better. It could be 33 having a BKB available to use. His is on cooldown after that death. And to be honest, so, I don't know if it really matters. Like he's going to go and stun amp some dude and that's his job. The chase continues, yeah, BKB from Miro. They want. Disruption to dodge the boat. Miro backs away, Torrent Storm still intact. Nightfall the... has his BKB flying out. He, he's also hit this timing. 
Initiation around this war. Disruption goes off. Bushwhack doesn't quite hit him. And Mickey. Mickey is already so low. Nightfall's going to commit for the kill. They've got it easily. Now that Mickey is dead, it's up to Leshrek to try and carry this fight. No chance in hell. Not against GPK Sniper. Another ridiculous find from Steve. And they're going to try and clean some extra heroes up here. Fox might get out. Yep. Yeah. Nice little Bushwhack. That's just Nightfall being able to commit with BKB, though, off that last one. That's why they go for Mickey there. They know it's a guaranteed man fight, and Nightfall's probably going to win that with his own BKB timing. He has Vlad's to back himself up in the in the one-on-one. -on -one. Mickey just not enough HP to live during that Eclipse. Maybe you could turn that around. That's very close. They don't have Disruption Winter, uh, for him either. Yeah, was Disruption still on cooldown, you think, from yeah, the, that, that, the earlier that's bit? That's why Steve went there, because he knows this. Disruption on cooldown, I have like a five second window where if I, I get this big core lasso, there's no safe turnaround. He, he's just stuck in there. We can all in him. It's a good call. Which just Worked means fundamentally that. Liquid just played that wrong, right? If disruption's on cooldown, you can't be pushing into a potential high ground ward. Yeah, that, that ward's a hard ward for them to go that deep on. I, I think Mickey played it a little too casually. I mean, forcing that fight, I don't think is bad because you're, you're have, you have to take fights with your timings in this game. You're just going to fall farther behind in terms of the scale. Like You need to get Nisha activated at some point. Nice. I don't duh. mind that fight, but that was a little too deep. Oh, wait. Slardar comes in to join in on this fight. Doesn't have the BKB, though. It's still on cooldown from the last fight again. So they'll trade out one for one here. Nightfall still hot on the tail of this squirrel. Meanwhile, Boat's going to pull back in Nisha, so they turn, turn back for Nisha. Oh, so much damage! And Insania can't get the disruption off. He throws it off now onto the oh, Warfling, bad. but it, it's it's done, man. It's done. This fight's done, and, and this game is not looking too hot either. No, Liquid just, they never got to where they needed to be with this lineup. And now they're just stuck in a game where you have to try and man fight, double carry with a Kunkka behind them with a Lesh, and that's just not where the hero shines. Die. Pretty well executed Die. game plan from Bet Boom. They knew Liquid was going to take this Lashrak like we talked about. It's a double-edged sword. It's a hero that's been very good for them, but it's also something you can plan for because you know it's going to happen. And they definitely got what they wanted here. Three good core matchups, a Dispel, a BKB piercing support ult. It's literally as good as you're going to get. It's the nightmare lineup. All right, well, this is really the do or die moment for Liquid, who is currently bleeding out, uh, contesting this next Roshan. They can't win this fight. Then you have a very easy high ground ahead of you for Bet Boom, I think. Uh, you have to just go low in here, man. You don't have a choice. Uh, I feel like the way they're this. taking this is already not great. They're running straight into the Enchantress Kunkka. They get the crush, though, out from 33. Half his HP gone in an instant, though. And now Mickey trying to back away from Nightfall, but the damage is coming in. And BKB disruption goes out, but it's all too late. He's going to come back with no HP left, no Satanic to heal him back up. Nisha's trying to keep his own HP high with a Bloodstone, but uh, he, the backline's already gone. He just has to try and hide away. <laughs> He doesn't have DP. He's got to hide here for 30 seconds. That That's probably the game. I, I think if, if you're not getting this Roche, it's just it's insurmountable at this point. Way too many items that make the Lashrax game way too hard. Nightfall's going to have a Scotty off that. Like, I don't know what you do versus him at this point. You don't have the control. You don't have the man fight capability. 33, scouted and routed. Get behind him. Stop the uh, lane pulling shenanigans and Nightfall will take the high ground. Nightfall pick was pretty nasty. Like they, they kind of baited him a little bit with this Kunkka. You're thinking it's this yeah. Kunkka Lesh matchup and then you just throw this curveball, you get the sniper. There's a hero that's gone down in priority, but kind of just gets left in the pool and is still incredibly strong if you can fight around it, which they had the supports to do that. Honestly, just a really well set up lineup from Vepoom here came together, they got all the power runes for GPK and, and get Nightfall his signature Morphling at the end. I mean, that's just the cherry on top. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, it's, it's not the worst position, uh, like drafting wise, the start of this game. 
It's not the worst position from Liquid's point of view, right? Where it's like, okay, we need to win our lanes in Snowball. That's something that they excel at. But I think in this matchup specifically, Bet Boom putting a draft forward that puts Liquid in a position where you have to win lanes. And Bet Boom is a team who is very good. It's, they're one of the teams that can contest the Western European teams when it comes to the laning phase. You know, I think that they that's a, that's a formula for success right there. A good point. I mean, it is one of their strengths, so they play to it. They know they're probably not... Like, if they go in this game and they know they're not going to get run over in the first 10 minutes because their lane mechanics are just that good, then you can mm -hmm. play this type of lineup with a lot more confidence. Knowing you're going to get to the point where the Morphling and the Sniper come online, you know GPK is going to have a good time mid. But he had a good time mid because Liquid just can't help the, the Lush Rack, and they can't help the Lush because the side lanes never snowballed for them. Yeah. So that's where those laning mechanics come into play. Like Bepu yeah, you take the same matchup well. and, and say it's Liquid versus Extreme, right? With an XM mid sniper. Like, I think the game looks very different, right? Where it, maybe Extreme Eventually. still win it, but it's Liquid who usually would take the momentum uh, first. They would be ahead by like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, these things aren't just isolated vacuums. Like, this sniper is a hero that can get ganked. He's a hero that if he dies once or twice, the Leshrac takes his tower. You can get a faster blink on the Lesh, and this matchup looks different. These things just can't happen if the side lanes aren't as crisp and they don't snowball for you and you don't have the support freedom. But boom, just played those lanes damn well, set themselves up. And despite all the net worth Liquid found on their supports, it's just not combating these core matchups right now. And GPK with an Alpha Wolf behind him. Satanic finish is going ham. Got the lasso. Pulls back the Shadow Demons, though so Mikke doesn't take any damage from that initiation. They try and go on to Nightfall, but Nightfall with his BKB and oh, working in his strength is doing all right. And the Enchantress is destroying them. Sniper and Enchantress, oh, big damage. Wait a minute, Conda plus the shot from Boxy does manage to take away the Aegis from the Sniper, but it's only the two of them alive now and a second Sniper to contend with. Now it's only Mikke. Mikke, alone in his base, will call the GG and